is a time when all young people feel the need for freedom to explore new horizons. They are impatient and eager to discover life. But between their eagerness and life's promises stands one unpredictable obstacle, their parents. A blue room, guys. I've never been to the blue room. Me neither, thing. Bet no one in the whole class will think of going there after the dance. The blue room. Gosh, that's the dreamiest idea I've heard yet. But count me out. You know how strict my father is. Parents are sure tough. I'm bound to get a battle out of mine. But let's try, all of us. Even you, Jane. It's worth a try. Oh, you guys have it easy. Parents are rough on girls. They just don't understand. Well, what's the difference? They treat us all like babies. Yeah. Here are six young people complaining about their parents. Are parents hard to live with? Don't they understand the younger generation at all? Or does the young generation misunderstand parents? Well, I don't know what young people are thinking of these days. No discipline, no consideration, no sense of the value of money. Everything seems so old-fashioned to them. No sense of responsibility. Absolutely. You know, they get too much freedom, too much money. I used to think we had problems when Betty was little. Couldn't wait to see her grow. Oh, it's the old story. Little kids, little problems. Big kids, big problems. Apparently, somebody sees this question a little differently. Could it be that teenagers are hard to live with, too? Maybe there are two sides to the question. Let's follow Betty inside and get better acquainted with the Anderson. Mother, mother! Guess who asked me to the class dance? Who? Jimmy Allen. Oh. I can go, can't I? Well, of course you can oh, go. Oh, I'm so happy. See, and you thought you'd never break into the new car. I thought I was going to be that new girl forever. <laughs> Jimmy's going to drive, and Jane and Mary and their dates are coming with us. And afterwards, Mother, we're going to the blue room. Oh, the Everyone's going to die of envy. Oh, the blue room. That's that wacky place with the name band and the floor show. You know, Betty, I like your new friends. They're, they're nice children. Children? And I know you're going to need a new dress, dear. Well, I don't know about the blue room afterwards, dear. But, Mother, I've got to go where the crowd goes. Well, let's wait and talk to Dad before we get so upset. I just heard his car drive up. He'll be in in a minute. Hello, dear. <laughs> oh, Hi, Dad. Hi. Hi. I'm so glad you're home early. Uh, Guess what happened? What? Jimmy Allen has invited Betty to the class band. Formal, no less. Jimmy Allen, eh? Well, it uh, seems to me I've heard you mention him before. Oh, Father. Well, what's wrong? They want to go to the Blue Room afterwards. The Blue Room? Oh, no. No, that's out. The class dance is all right, but no Blue Room. But, Father, I've got to go where the crowd goes. No, no, it raised me out again. Well, Betty, it isn't as bad as all that. It is. It's worse. Betty's deeply hurt. From her point of view, her parents are being very hard. But from her parents' point of view, Betty is asking too much. It's an argument that can be solved only by compromise. But at Betty's age, it is difficult to accept compromise. Let's hear what Jimmy's father thinks about their plan to go to the Blue Room. Hi, Dad. Hello, son. Where are you going? Taking out a client. What's on your mind? Well, don't forget, you promised I could have the car for the class dance, Dad. I told the kids I'd drive. I won't forget, but you have to put in the gas. And you have to wash it. Wish I didn't have to go tonight. Didn't I wash it last time? Yes, when I told you you couldn't have it again if you didn't. Incidentally, I want to know what time you get home. Your mother worries when you have the car. I know how to drive, and I'm careful. I'm always careful. You probably are, Jimmy, most of the time. But you don't have to cause an accident to be in one. I saw a car last night with at least 10 kids jammed into it. Oh, don't worry, Dad. There are only six of us. And six in Bill Swanson's car. Mm-hmm. Gee, Dad, why, why do you always have to act like a state's attorney when I want to borrow the car? Jimmy's revolt against his inquisitive father is genuine. Regardless of his father's reasons for asking so many questions, Jimmy resents it. Oh, but here they come. Let's listen. Are you going to come straight home after the dance, or are you taking the girls out for a bite to eat? Well, the real fun begins after the dance is over. The kids all want to go down to the Blue Room. The Blue Room? Mm-hmm. Down at the lake? Yeah. Why, that place will cost a fortune. Do you think I'm made of money? Well, gee, Dad, it's the big dance of the year. 
You've got to do something special. Well, that's why I've been saving my allowance. Oh, you have enough? Well, almost. I, uh, I thought maybe you could lend me a little bit. Oh, you did. I supply the car, plus your allowance, and you expect me to let you have some more. Who's doing the courting? You or my pocketbook? When I was your age, a dollar was a lot, and five dollars was plenty for the junior prom. Well, things are different now. Besides, I'm only doing what the rest of the gang does. I'm sorry. You and your friends will have to think of something else to do. Something sensible. Jimmy and his father look at the question of using the car and spending money from different points of view. True, Jimmy needs an opportunity to prove that he can carry responsibility. But on the other hand, he's been negligent in the past. In different homes, different problems arise. Jane's date, Dick, thinks his greatest problem is his mother. Hi, Mom. Sorry I'm late. What's for dinner? Some good liver and bacon. Warmed over, though. You're very late tonight. Anything happen at the store? Don't forget your vitamins. Oh, liver. Vitamins. Sounds like a doctor's prescription. Well, you should have liver at least once a week. You need vitamins, too. I know. You tell me that every day. Where's Pop? He had to go out on a call again. I wish you wouldn't work so hard, Dick. You have too full a schedule. Oh, my, I do not. I'm doing okay. Well, you're trying to do too much, Dickie. What with your job, your schoolwork, going out to parties and dances and seeing your friends, it's just too much for you. I wish you'd quit that job. Oh, Ma, I'm doing okay. Why do you worry all the time? I'm not a baby. Of course you're not, but you're not grown up either. Now, do drink your milk. I wish you'd quit that job. It's just too much for you. I like my job. It gives me some money of my own. You know, for like after the school dances. You know Dad would yell if I asked him for some money to go to the Blue Room. The Blue Room? That's no place for young people. Why not? We're old enough. The whole gang's going. But you work so hard to save, Dick. You can't afford to let money slip through your fingers. And I won't have you staying out all night ruining your health. Oh, stay out all night. Ruin my health. Throw my money away. Can't I do anything? Look, I'm old enough to take care of myself. I won't leave you alone. And I won't have you ruining your health. Not after all I've gone through with you. You were such a sickly baby. Oh, for goodness sakes, Mom, I'm not a baby anymore. Sometimes it seems hard to convince parents that you're growing up. But on the other hand, young people easily forget that for the greater part of their lives, they've been completely dependent upon their mothers. Growing up is a long process with many ups and downs. Like Dick, many children have gone through long periods of illness from measles and chicken pox to upset stomachs and earaches and growing troubles of one kind or another. And so it is perfectly natural for Dick's mother to continue to protect him. And it's perfectly natural for Dick to assert his desire for independence. What is the answer? There is no one answer. Dick and his mother may have to face it that parents and children sometimes look at the same situation from opposing sides. But let's leave Dick's home and see why Dick's date, Jane, expressed so much concern about her parents. I don't see why I can't go to the movies tomorrow night. We discussed that at dinner, because it's a school night. You know the rules about school night. Rules, rules, rules. I can't do this, I can't do that. I can never do anything. Oh, that's not true, and you know it. You've got a big weekend coming up at the class stand. We gave you permission to go to that. You'd have to be ogres to keep me from that. Well, we're not ogres, and we wouldn't keep you from it. But your daddy said to tell you to be sure to be in by 12. 12? I can't be in by then. I'll be the only one who can't go. Go where? You are going. Not to the dance, to the blue room afterwards. Remember the kids that came to my party last year? Well, we're all going together, in two cars. I can't be in by then. I'm sorry, Jane, but your daddy says that 12 is the limit. That's right, young lady. 12 o'clock. That's plenty late for a girl your age. And if you can't be in by 12 o'clock, just forget the whole thing. But, Father, all the other girls... I am what? not interested in what others do. In my house, I make the rules. Oh, I might have known. Nobody else's parents are as strict as you are. <laughs> Poor Jane. She's really upset. Of course, she doesn't know that her friends aren't doing any better, even though they could put up a longer fight. 
Jane's father is rather strict. But there's a reason behind it. He was brought up this way, obeying his elders, never questioning their command. And he lived a happy and successful life. You can hardly blame him for trying to raise his family in the same spirit. But Jane resents it. She wants to live her own life, a life similar to those of her friends. Jane is torn by conflicts, how to show respect for her parents and still have the right to live her own life as a full member of the family team. Some families achieve this feeling of teamwork at the conference table. The Smiths hold a family conference every few weeks to discuss budgets and allowances and other problems of mutual concern. And when special problems come up, they hold a special family conference to work it out together. Where does that leave us, Glenn? Well, I guess that does it. $25. Now, how much of that do you two think you should have for this one night? Not $20, I suppose. Well, any other suggestions? Gee, Glenn, I guess we're out. We better tell the others right away. Well, there must be something you can do that's fun, just a little more practical. Well, what are some of the alternatives? Well, the high school hangout closes at 10 o'clock, so that's out. There's the Paradise Cafe and the All Night Cafeteria and the drive-ins. I guess they aren't very exciting, are they? Are any of the girls having parties at their house? Yes, but there's nothing to do. It's the same old thing. We want to do something special. Well, of course you do, but couldn't we make it special? Sure, special food, music, maybe favors or decorations. Well, sure, fine. Listen, now, I have an idea. Could you leave it to a group of us parents just this once? Trust us to make it a special party? predictable from Jane's point of view, just as she is from theirs. But once the young adults understand that their parents are people, people with habits, moods, and a right to live their own life, and when the parents realize how important it is for the young adults to manage their own affairs, then they can deal with each other as mutually respecting individuals. And their relationships will be healthier and happier.